there's a phrasing called the 10,000 hour rule, which is this concept that if you can find the thing that you can spend 10,000 hours doing and excelling at, then can you truly excel at it? And for me, I've been lucky enough to find two 10,000 hour rules in my life. The first was hockey. I grew up in Connecticut. And hockey is a huge part of the culture there, both ice hockey as well as playing outdoors when you're a kid. And for me, I played hockey with a ton of energy and that really carried over into the rest of my life. Hockey was effectively 90% of what I focused on when I was in a classroom. And I was able really to learn some foundational lessons, hard work, discipline, dedication, and also I think some of the biggest things of dealing with failure. And I was certainly on teams over the years that were super successful and then you follow that up with a season where you're not successful at all and how to deal with that. But in my teenage years, I started to really become interested in media. I started to compete a lot with my love for hockey. Media began to sort of creep into what I'd be doing in my free time, what I would spend my downtime or sort of hobbies doing. And a love for film and a love for music led me to found uh, a band when I was in high school and tore that band around. Um, first some small venues, some pretty uninspiring shows. And the band grew from there to be able to go on to play some decent sized club. And from that, it sort of like most high school bands fizzled out, but the love for media and the sort of hook into entertainment and the entertainment business was sort of set. For me, again, it was all about consuming and absorbing content as a really passionate audience member. And those were really important formative years of learning that's ultimately led me here to Lake Forest. And Lake Forest was a perfect opportunity to explore both sides, again, of those cornerstones of my personality. I was playing hockey, but I had the ability to really start focusing everything from an energy standpoint about how I was going to form my major in philosophy and English to business around the concept of shooting a film. In between my junior and senior year, I sort of took that leap, raised some money. Um, my then girlfriend, my now wife, had a really close family friend who was out in Los Angeles at USC. And so I had convinced him to, to come join me that summer here in Chicago uh, to shoot this we thought was, was going to be this huge feature film. And that opportunity uh, led us to, to put together Buffalo 8. The original iteration and purpose of that company was just to hold the liability and to be the production company for that first film, the alumni chapter. The film is an attempt at being a mashup between the films of Wes Anderson and John Hughes, which that influenced and impacted the way we shot some of the running sequences, action sequences, even here on campus. We had no grand vision of what it would become or anything of the sort. It was, we're all in on this film and we went full steam ahead to make it. I then used my March break to fly to Los Angeles for the first time to shop the film and try to sell it. And I think you have these grand uh, ambitions and expectations about what that trip's gonna look like, the kind of meetings you're going to take. Uh, but ultimately, again, it was a great example of hockey teaching you not to necessarily not get up after you've been knocked down. We would go into many meetings and the answer would, would be no. After that trip, I uh, came back reflecting on the offers that we had on the table and realizing there's a lot of work left to do if we're gonna actually be in the entertainment business. We graduated uh, here in May 2011 from Lake Forest and moved to Los Angeles. I was 22, 23 years old. I had this small little production company trying to build a brand. It run out of the apartment that uh, I was living in, but we were willing to be really scrappy and really resourceful. And again, using a lot of those, those lessons of hockey of just putting in the time, putting in the work, uh, and just continuing to, to power forward. As it grew and we added these additional divisions, post-production business, management business, the network and the brand was continuing to spread. So in 2016, it was a huge inflection point for the company, mainly because we had three films premiering at Sunday. We had a film called Little Men, which the New York Times ranked one of the top 10 best films of the year. Uh, and President Obama at the time did one of his top 10 favorite films of the year. You sort of realize, okay, this is an unbelievable moment to sort of be grateful. And then to not necessarily revel in it too much because you've got to figure out what comes next. If we're going to take control of what comes next, we need to raise a fund. I was 25 years old when we launched Bondit. And so doing that required an insane amount of persistence, an insane amount of networking. Uh, but we had laid a great foundation with Buffalo 8, and now we had a team that could continue to run that day to day. So over the next, now it's been five years, just a little over five years, yeah, Bondit grew to be one of the most well-known entertainment finance companies in the world. In 2018, we had a film called Loving Vincent, which was the 2018 Oscar nominated for Best Animated Film. And that was huge. Having a, having a film that was both Golden Globe and Oscar nominated 
really again helped elevate not only the brand of the company, but allowed us, and at this point, we had done about 250 motion picture financing deals with big names from people like Emma Thurman and James Franco, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but now you had something that's sort of the uh, premier uh, global platform that is the Academy Awards, and really allowed the brand to continue to snowball from there. Similarly to that 10,000 hour rule of putting in that time, and being truly in love with it, getting past the reality that from the outside, this business isn't necessarily just red carpets and rubbing elbows with celebrities. It's really hard work. It's a business. Uh, and you've got to be willing to love both sides of it. I think now it's about recognizing that we're not the youngest people in the room. Just like I wasn't certainly the best player in every room I was in in terms of hockey locker rooms. And now figuring out how to surround yourself with a deeper bench of really great players and to figure out how to continue to compete at, at a super high level. I think the amazing thing is that I still get to play hockey three days a week. So I now live in Santa Monica where the weather is a little bit different than it is out here in Lake Forest. Uh, so the hockey is a little bit different, but I get to uh, work out every day and continue to have that same discipline that I really learned from sports. So my days usually begin uh, six or seven days a week for a 6 a.m. run, day at the beach where the weather's warm, uh, and then I get to play hockey two or three days a week. But hockey remains a huge part of my life. I do business with people I play hockey with, major entertainment figures like the Jerry Brockheimers of the world, the Steve Carells of the world, who play in a league in, in Los Angeles. And, and that's Again, a, an extension of the community that I grew up in where hockey is a big part and a big piece of the fabric of a lot of these people's lives. And whether that defined you as a business person, defined you as someone who continued on in sports, uh, it's really continued to be one of the cornerstones now with media taking sort of an equal foothold in my identity and what drives me year over year.